Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, where you're joining from. Um, thank you for joining. This is the last uh, couple of hours of the uh, OpenStack Manila PTG for the uh, Wallaby release cycle. Uh, today we'll be joined by a number of folks at different times. So uh, and and these have been uh, set with uh, people that, that that probably were have been working in adjacent spaces uh, as well as uh, with us. Uh, it, I mean, people that will be working with us in the future uh, for the cycle. Uh, so I I wouldn't go through introductions right away, uh, but um, just a word to mark. Uh, uh, Tony, Nicole, and um, when uh, Ashley joins as well, uh, you're free to. Uh, you're, you're welcome to stay. Uh, we will be discussing uh, some of some some of these items that uh, you, you you might actually learn something uh, ab about the whole process from. So uh, feel free to stay. But I will 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 actually introduce you in an, in about an hour uh, when we when we talk about uh, the OpenStack SDK and stuff. All right, uh, I know Tom just told me that he is in another meeting with the TC uh, and he will join us uh, shortly. But we should get started. Uh, today we will start our day off with talking about the last remaining experimental feature, uh, experimental API. So let me grab that link as well as start sharing my screen. You might have to enable that, Douglas. Great, thank you. All right, uh, so Let's begin with uh, talking about share and share server migration. Uh, so I will probably go tandem with uh, Carlos. Um, we, we haven't spoken much about it, about this before the PTG, but this is kind of, uh, we wanted to uh, bring this up for the team and, uh, and, and discuss how we want to go, go forward with this change. Uh, so uh, Carlos, do you want to get us started? Yeah, of course. Awesome, thank you. I'll take notes. All right, so uh, since the, the end of the trend release, we have started talking about graduating some uh, API uh, that were still under experimental state uh, in Manila code. So uh, after, after the discussions we've had in the trend release, we have started uh, working in the graduation of the, these experimental features uh, for just two cycles now uh, and some uh, experimental APIs are already graduated. So uh, the first one we have graduated was the share group APIs. Uh, it was done during the user release and uh, we have managed to remove the experimental flag from all the share groups APIs and the documentation changes as well. So I, I would say there is only one change for documentation that exists to work but it has a, a lot of uh, content and uh, it's I would say it's kind of close, close to be merged. And uh, after the, the shared groups uh, in the previous cycle, we have managed to uh, remove the experimental flag from share replica APIs. So uh, the Victoria release was the one that we have uh, graduated the, the share replicas. And uh, so there are some still some documentation change pending. But uh, before, uh, so we have graduated, we defined a goal, which is to have uh, at least one API graduated by release. And I think we are in time to start the migration for another feature, uh, now the share migration feature. So uh, in this cycle, I intend to start working in the graduation for uh, the share migration APIs feature. And uh, this, uh, a little bit of context about this API. Uh, it was first implemented during the Liberty release, but it suffered some changes throughout the improvements that were proposed in f further releases uh, since like Okata, Mitaka, sorry, 
Newton and Okata. And uh, uh, this, these changes were defined by uh, some uh, follow-up specs for the, the initial version from Liberty. And uh, these APIs have been up for a while. Uh, and if I'm correct, they, uh, they haven't been heavily modified since Okata release. So uh, I think we are in a good shape uh, to start the migration for it during Wallaby. And uh, something that enforces this, uh, this uh, I think to say that we are kind of ready to have this migration started is that uh, we haven't have had a lot of problems with these APIs. Uh, so uh, during all this cycle that it, it has been up, uh, it was pretty stable. And uh, there aren't a lot of uh, first and third party drivers implementing the driver safety migration. And uh, I, think, I think we are okay to, to remove the, the experimental flag from these APIs. And uh, I need uh, to ask you if you guys have any concern or, or something like that before we uh, start working on the, the migration of uh, the, sorry, the graduation for the share migration feature. So I, uh, I mean, I want to note the previous concerns that were there. Uh, so we know we have users in the wild that are happy with uh, optimized migration. Uh, we have had some bugs being filed against them as well. Uh, and we have had driver optimized migration implemented in at least one of the first party drivers. So we have test coverage for, uh, for it. Uh, we certainly did a lot of work for uh, the generic migration. And the generic migration uses um, the Manila data service, and it's the only user of that uh, of this of this microservice that Manila in the in the Manila stack. And the concerns around the Manila data service were uh, basically around HA, uh, and the uh, I mean HA because you you would have you could th in theory have many Manila data services except. The, uh, the share manager would pick one and schedule the change um, and, and the, uh, the RabbitMQ RPC layer would fairly distribute uh, the job to one of the uh, Manila data services that is available. But when, the, when, an, when a migration is ongoing, uh, we have no sort of HA. So it is a single point of failure. It is driven by the service. Uh, so if the service goes down uh, at, at any point, it, 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 it only recovers, uh, I mean, it, it, it is meant to recover uh, only when that same service comes back up um, or, or you bounce the, the other, one of the other services or something because we have built the uh, aspect of service recovery into the service start time, uh, which I think we were trying to, uh, uh, trying to change with uh, having, an, uh, having a separate database representation of, of the ongoing migrations and uh, controlling the ongoing migrations via the share manager uh, in uh, using this database representation. And that database representation was informally called the job tables uh, or jobs table, I guess, if it was one, uh, one particular database uh, object that we were trying to represent this with. Uh, so the, the, the idea there was you, you would record which particular share managers, as I shared, Manila data service is responsible for a given migration. You would record the uh, request ID, the start time, the current progress, et cetera. And you would use that uh, jobs table to also uh, recover from the point where, uh, I mean, uh, where, where, I mean, for a different data service to pick up the, the migration workload from the point where the previous one uh, had stopped working. So this is plainly in terms of keeping uh, service continuity and, and, and the control plane operation continuing to go uh, because we expect a generic migration is not going to be fast or efficient. Uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, de depending on how much uh, compute power uh, you have uh, to dedicate to this particular service. Uh, a lot like the Cinder backup service or any of these data plane uh, services that are there in OpenStack. But uh, it is still a way, uh, it is still the only way we would love uh, data to be migrated from 
uh, heterogeneous backends or even backends that have not implemented any kind of driver optimized migration. So this was the major concern that the data service was introduced. Uh, we have been testing it in the gates for the, for since, uh, as Carlos said, the Liberty release, but the, um, I mean, we haven't made any improvements and there hasn't been much user feedback to make these sort of improvements. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's, that's the downside of this. But I think in the last cycle, we also said that the uh, APIs themselves have not um, changed. Um, and that's, uh, and that is something that we are, we are uh, free to discuss at this point. Should we think, do we think at any point that these changes that are going into the um, generic uh, share migration, if any, to improve it in the future cycles will affect the uh, share migration APIs. Will we be able to make uh, incremental progress as we would with any other Manula APIs or would we have to just, you know, tear them down uh, like what we do with experimental APIs? Uh, when I say that we haven't done that a lot, we have always tried to maintain backwards compatibility but share migration, if there's anything that's taught us through these three releases where it was improved, uh, we did have to make some backwards and compatible changes. So those that, uh, I mean, folks that up up upgraded to these newer releases, uh, they definitely had any tooling or workflows that, uh, that broke on them uh, after the upgrade. And we were able to get away with that because we said that this is a beta feature um, uh, and it's, uh, if you want to put it an alpha feature at that, and we have never graduated uh, that that particular API. So that's the thoughts on this, uh, and I think the the major concern here is as vendors start uh, vendor drivers start implementing the driver optimized migration, it would be kind of a deterrent for them to continue to have the API as experimental. So that would be one uh, motivation. And as Carlos said, the stability of the API so far uh, for as, at least as far as vendor optimized migration, driver optimized migration goes is one other reason. Any other thoughts on this or questions? So those that uh, that don't know uh, these, the uh, I mean APIs in Manila, uh, unlike uh, elsewhere, uh, when they are experimental, we have no timeline to declare them. Uh, I mean, uh, graduated. We we typically take sometimes multiple cycles of uh, of soak time to try and decide whether there has been significant user feedback or operator feedback. To, to, to see what these APIs look like and such. And this one, uh, as we we're discussing, has been around for a good part of, I mean, ever since Manila uh, was declared production ready, uh, which was the Liberty release. So it's a long time now. Yeah. So uh, do we have uh, uh, also in this topic, uh, the share server migration. Uh, I, I would say uh, the share server migration. We will need to. Uh, we will need to take a little bit more of time to to collect that feedback from uh, operators and people that are consuming the APIs. So uh, I would say, uh, in my opinion, it's okay to have it, uh, the share migration graduated uh, during the Wallaby release. But the share server migration, I think we would need to take. Uh, a, a little while in order to, to collect that, that feedback you talked about and uh, to to see what's going to be the stability of the APIs. Even if we uh, like had great reviews and we uh, based uh, a, great, a good part of the implementation in the share migration APIs, I think we, we still need to to wait a little bit longer. Yeah. 
Yeah, great point. Uh, so that would be one of the concerns. Uh, and if we go down this path of uh, graduation, I agree. Uh, I mean, share server migration was something that uh, there were quite a lot of, you know, open uh, questions and and what 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 sort of operator experience we were creating with it uh, and, and Douglas Carlos every, uh, and the and the others did a great job at uh, maintaining the, uh, the the consistency as far as um, operator experience goes between share migration and share server migration so but, but we we do still want to rely on uh, feedback and seeing if there is any major pitfalls that we were missing uh, through through the development or testing cycles. So that's definitely uh, something we got to think about. Anybody has any uh, concerns that we should be uh, graduating both of these together? All right, quite bunch today. So, uh, I mean, uh, that's understandable though, because I mean, the, the, this feature is mostly a day to operation for operators. And uh, we, we did a feedback session with operators uh, in the, uh, during the summit last week. And I, I guess uh, Maurice told us that he uses the uh, share migration feature, um, but we didn't get an opportunity to talk to a lot of people that were that were using this so it's it's always been the uh, the bane of this. The only way we we understand somebody is using it or uh, and, and benefiting from it or not is when we see bugs reported against the feature. And so far, since we just introduced shared server migration, there is no opportunity to uh, to have those that happening. So as far as timelines, maybe we can agree on some things. Uh, Carlos, do you have any specific recommendations in mind? Yeah, uh, for share migration, I would say Wallaby, but for share server migration, I would say we should wait at least at least one cycle. So Wallaby uh, or two cycles, I would say, considering the time that the, the other APIs we have graduated uh, have been up and. Uh, yeah, I would say we, we should use the same criteria for this one as well. Okay, agreements, disagreements. Okay, I, I agree with both. I'm sure migration to be graduated on, on this cycle. And, and we still need to uh, get some feedback on share server migration yet. We may uh, need to do some improvements or maybe provide new new parameters or so on. But uh, I think that something that uh, you, you know uh, during this cycle, maybe the next one. But, uh, and also for shell server migration, we still have only a one vendor driver implementing that. Not sure if we're going to have other order version drivers implementing. Uh, do you guys know how many uh, vendor drivers implement the share migration? I, I don't know. It's a fair question. I actually don't have count. I know at the beginning it was maybe two or three vendor drivers that had uh, a driver optimized migration. And uh, I think, go ahead, Carlos. Sorry for, to interrupt. Uh, as I've searched, uh, only one first party driver implements it, which is the NetApp driver. And uh, there are, uh, oops, uh, I, I, gonna, I don't recall if I said NetApp uh, first party driver, third party driver. I think I'm confused in my mind. But uh, NetApp is the only third party driver which implements the driver assisted migration. And uh, as first party drivers, we have uh, the ZFS on Linux and the container driver.
Okay, so I was confused. I think I, I was thinking about the share server manage and manage. I saw a patch from, uh, I mean, the, for the Dell UMC drivers a uh, couple of cycles ago, I think. Yeah, yeah manage and manage, uh, more people implement that feature. And even with uh, in that app, isn't it uh, only a, a certain case, like in the sense you could only perform non-disruptive migrations? Yeah, uh, within the same pool, in the same uh, SVM in the back in the backend. And for those uh, tests uh, we run on the on the downstream uh, some migration tests, uh, just uh, with uh, kind of modifications to only choose the compatible pools, since uh, we don't have the that check, that migration check that we added in charts of migration. So uh, in our downstream uh, CI, uh, we are running some tests uh, against. Uh, uh, two backends, I think. Against two backends, as in uh, yeah, but uh, they 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 only work between the same the same pool. Oh, okay, so you're migrating from the same pool to the same pool. Yeah, probably just changing share types or something. Yeah, I believe that uh, we have uh, some, including some tests with QoS and. Uh, uh, Maybe changing the share type also. They are the same tests that we have on upstream, but uh, we are just keeping tests with different share networks because we, we need to move across different uh, SVMs. And we added uh, QoS tests also uh, to configure the QoS on the destination. Okay, so with, with 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 these in mind, though, I mean, I do I do want us to start uh, continue to make progress on this, but uh, it it feels a lot like uh, progress for the sake of progress starts. In case if we if we if we were to, sorry, that's a Dolores Sunbridge reference, uh, but it, if we were to think about these uh, things that we're not really uh, testing it extensively. We've not had as much uh, third party interest in this. Should we actually uh, commit to migrating, sorry, uh, graduating this in Wallaby? Yeah, that, that's a fair question. Uh, if, well, if there's a way we have uh, some more input from people that are using it on how they are feeling about the the APIs uh, if it, like there's something that can, they can point out for us yeah I, I can think on a limitation that we currently have is that we cannot use the same network allocation when moving shared servers and maybe some backend drivers may support this kind of migration but uh, currently the implementation does not support it. It's something that might be need to be improved. So we are just always allocating a new uh, uh, a new IP address, a new network location for the new share server. But might be something that we can uh, reuse the same in order to avoid uh, creating uh, new export locations, different export locations, so the user can mount the same, if needed, can mount the same export location. Might be improvement. Just can think on this one right now. 
have you heard uh, i mean perhaps your any of your users that uh, that that have given you feedback about this feature do they care uh, as much about it being uh, staying in this alpha state about staying sorry staying in this experimental state uh, do oh. they have ha have had issues with it being an experimental api and that we're not supporting this no i don't think so never heard about it okay. the reason i ask is uh, i think past couple of cycles one of the drives to start uh, pushing this and carlos did all of the work um, is because at least distributions like red hat um, they do, they do not support any experimental apis that the upstream community has so that is one deterrent at least that folks that are that are using that distribution would not have support uh, support from their distribution should should something go wrong or they wouldn't have any documentation that the distribution provides they would have to rely only on upstream channels to get their issues resolved and such so that that is one 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 way of looking at it uh, at least for the other features which is huge um, because we 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 had some some uh, desire to have replication migrated uh, from graduate uh, from experimental to GA. We had some desire to gra graduate share groups as well. But yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've not heard uh, any requests for share migration, uh, except I think um, uh, we, we've, we've had Dell EMC requests uh, to qualify the uh, generic share migration. Because again, their drivers do not implement any uh, driver optimized migration. So maybe it's a question for the other vendors. And Dell EMC owns like three or four of these backends. Uh, so it is probably a question for the other vendors to see if they would like to implement it first. And then we, we can think about uh, you know graduating the APIs. Yeah. That, that would work as well. So I think we should get in touch with them and uh, mm -hmm. ask them these questions. So uh, we have uh, a bit more of input on, on this. Sorry, stop there for a second to take notes. Um, so, thanks for. I mean, this this was uh, a pretty interesting uh, rehash, at least. And uh, we we do, you know, uh, often dis discuss this, and that's good. We now have uh, a little more uh, of a clearer picture. So, let, yeah, let's let's probably t check with the vendors. And uh, Carlos, would would you help uh, with this action item? Of course. And sure, we can take it from there. If uh, there's anyone that still has concerns, there is uh, absolutely an opportunity for you to speak up and uh, and let us know through the Wallaby cycle uh, what you feel about this. And if it is important and uh, essential for, for us to graduate this, uh, and it's, uh, there is something we haven't considered as part of today's discussion, we'd love to know. Uh, and that's the kind of feedback we're expecting. Great. Any other thoughts, concerns around this? Not from my side. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so we'll just uh, roll on to the next topic before we take a short break.
uh, and let me just grab the next topic over from the planning etherpad this is a discussion on uh, on metadata for uh, all of the uh, all resources in um, in manila and i got a separate etherpad for that uh, it's linked out there so let's get into that um so uh, i did tag robert on this uh, but i just wanted to add my thoughts and probably open it up for discussion and have robert's feedback as well uh, because uh, his use case was one of the reasons why uh, i was trying to propose this change so uh, what what is this what is metadata well uh, we know since we have, we have a couple of resources at least that that we have uh, had metadata interactions allowed with uh, those are shares and access rules so metadata is a way that uh, users can tag certain properties onto these resources so you can create a share uh, with some metadata or you can add a metadata to an existing share uh, and modify a metadata to a share. So these are basically just key value pairs. Uh, I mean, the keys and values are UTF-8 encoded, um, and they they both have, I, I guess, identical limits in terms of uh, the, the length and the characters, uh, character set and, and all of that stuff. Um, so the, the idea is to, to provide for flexibility in terms of um, how you want to identify the share uh, or, or any resource, right? And the the the, the flexibility extends into be, becoming, uh, you know, uh, making something more programmable. So in case you were you were to rely on, uh, hey, I'd like to I like to recall that this share was built for this particular purpose, or it was provisioned for by this provisioner, uh, as in case of Manila CSI, um, or I would like to describe onto this particular object, like say for example, an export location. Uh, we, you, you know that Manila can provide, uh, let's, I mean, uh, multiple export locations for a given share. So I'd like, as a user, to define what export location I'd want to use for what purpose. And so that, that, that that's the sort of identifying information that uh, users can use the metadata uh, aspect for, uh, metadata feature for. And another example would be if you had a fan out replication and you had multiple replicas, you, you, would, you would have a similar desire to understand uh, and identify which one is for what purpose or uh, you know, what, what characteristics there are about it. Uh, so could you do this any other way? Yes, uh, the, the other ways you could do this is most of these resources that we're talking about have names, they have descriptions. A description is a free flow, uh, I think, 255 character um, field that you could that you could actually uh, type a bunch of uh, a glob of text uh, into. And th this again is programmable uh, because you can modify, uh, you can you can create, update, and and get rid of uh, the names or the tips and descriptions. None of these are uh, mandatory. And but the the aspect uh, about putting information like that in names and descriptions is that you you take away the ease of modifiability. Uh, it, yeah, there are APIs, but then if you let's say you want to make a eight eight single toggle, let uh, for example you have uh, this export location is for this availability zone in my own conception, although it it is available in two other availability zones. I would like to use this in this particular AZ. So I, I have my own metadata for that. I probably say uh, use for AZ1. And should should I put this sort of a tag in the in the description? Uh, it, it would be hard for me to modify it later without also copying the rest of the text. And so you'll, you'll have to do some sort of subtext processing and such. And, and the name is also is a, is a very short uh, field as such, and we we typically want it to be used for, you know, uh, naming the resource and nothing else, uh, and and naming it based on whatever your custom naming policies are. So that's the uh, motivation behind this, uh, and those are the example use cases. So the the, uh, the alternatives are not not very uh, feasible. Is the point? 
and what what resources do we already have this on so share metadata has existed since time immemorial we've we've been able to add and remove metadata keys to shares and we've uh, i think uh, i don't remember i think it was api version 2.25 uh, 45 must have been in uh, um, this, this time release or rocky release we added uh, metadata for the access rules as well so we've uh, i mean we allow uh, you know the same uh, interactions as as were on shares now the share share instance export locations this one is a little strange uh, because we call this aspect of uh, i mean we we do have an aspect of having metadata on share export locations but this is not user modifiable metadata this metadata is set by the drivers as they uh, create these export locations and they can they can choose to tag an export location as preferred or they can even set their own custom driver specific uh, ex uh, metadata onto the export locations and we wanted to actually standardize certain uh, things such as preferred preferred is a way for uh, for an administrator perhaps or an operator to to tag a particular network uh, per se for example for a particular driver to say this is the best path best optimum path that uh, uh, that users uh, must mount their shares from but if they if that is not available here are the other export locations so these are non preferred and this is preferred so that's just a way of identifying what's the best path uh, perhaps and there are, they, we even use this vehicle to to to, uh, to differentiate between admin and non admin export locations and such so uh, it's not the same as shares and access rules, but I think one of the points uh, that I want to drive is that we should allow uh, user metadata on these export locations as well. So what's needed is is for all user facing resources, share snapshots, export locations, replicas, groups, snapshots, security services, shared networks, and subnets to have uh, user modifiable metadata. And the user interaction between, uh, for, as far as uh, adding, removing, deleting metadata uh, items, should be this uniform across these resources. And these resources must be must provide uh, get APIs that can be filtered uh, through this metadata, just like how we uh, we have today for the shares API. So this filtering is important because uh, of, uh, I mean. Probably people want to build user interfaces or even uh, ha have the searchability uh, based on this um, programmable data that they're setting on their resources. And uh, we also want to be able to follow the API SIG spec on how resource metadata must be mo must be represented in the API. And we, I, I, I mean, one of the Desirable things is also that we, we make all of these modifications to API metadata in one micro version uh, and through the Wallaby release. Uh, so an aspect of how we uh, how we want to achieve this, uh, well, we do have an example of imposing a consistent controller uh, uh, across multiple uh, resources, and that's the admin, uh, admin actions plugin. And what that does is it gives every every resource, let's say a share, snapshot, replica, et cetera, a way to be modifiable by administrators in the same consistent manner. So you, an administrator would have uh, some actions such as resetting the state, just go into the database and resetting the state, force deleting a resource, uh, which means that if if the if a backend or uh, or the storage system is telling you that you can't delete something, you would still want to get rid of it from Manila's perspective. Uh, so, and and I suppose I don't remember what else is there in the admin actions mix in, but the the these were implemented with the same uh, with the idea that we it has to be consistent across the resources. That that's the point I'm trying to make. And so we would create a different uh, a, a different mixin. I don't have the implementation yet, but I did. I do. I do have some scratch code uh, that I can put up. And we 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 just allow all of the uh, uh, resource controllers to 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 inherit this mixin, and we we magically get these new APIs working across them. 
So what, what is the end user impact like? Well, they can, as we said, create, delete, update metadata on all of these resources. They can filter the filter these resources with metadata and they could also correct a, uh, a, a an existing API uh, to, to conform to the API six spec. And the problem here is with the, the, the share meta, uh, shares metadata API currently uses, uh, allows a post to modify, uh, you know, individual items of the metadata uh, blob. So technically, you can uh, you can have an amount of metadata. Let's say you you have ten keys and ten values for these ten keys. If you used this API, that is, you sent a post request against the metadata API, you could modify a single key if you wanted, or a subset of the keys. But the API six spec specifically calls out that this isn't meant to be a post. It is meant to be a patch. It isn't meant to be a put either. So this is basically a place where we're not conforming to the spec. Uh, so we would, my, uh, my idea is we would just deprecate this uh, API as, as we have it, not stop supporting it. But we would introduce a patch um, API, uh, which accepts the, uh, the HTTP patch verb and performs the same way as we would the, the post API. So it's a, it's a minor uh, change from the code perspective, but perhaps uh, allows you know, tools to be built consistently across the services at least. So that's the uh, thing with that. And uh, just a little bit about the API impact over that. This is how you would uh, access any resource metadata. And you, if you wanted to modify the entire metadata blob, uh, the, the JSON object, uh, you could send a JSON object. And if you send an empty object, you would, you would be able to get delete all of the existing metadata for a given resource. And if you set, if you sent a, um, uh, a, a, a sorry, an empty JSON object is what I meant to say. Or if you sent a uh, JSON object with some metadata keys and uh, keys and values, you'd be able to replace the all of the existing metadata with this uh, new uh, set of keys and values that you have. Or you could you could decide as a user to basically just update a, a subset of the metadata keys and values, and you uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't delete the others that you're not updating at that point. Or you could act on each individual metadata item and uh, remove metadata or unset that uh, particular key. So these are the actions we intend to uh, implement as part of the metadata controller. And uh, for, for getting this implementation completed, we would have to modify the database. There will be database migrations uh, that will create new tables to, uh, to basically be uh, the, I mean, the holds for the metadata for each individual resource. Uh, just to separate concerns, we, we don't want to be loading a lot of resources at the same time. So unless you're modifying metadata, these, these new tables will not be loaded. Uh, the, 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 so your performance is not affected. But if you were to be modifying the uh, metadata, uh, we would be loading it uh, just in time to, 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 to make the metadata modification or to uh, retrieve the metadata that you need. No existing uh, uh, get APIs would be modified. You would still have to use the get uh, resource slash metadata to get the actual metadata from the from the resource. You will not be able to get it if you just hit the uh, slash v2 slash resource endpoint. Uh, that is consistent with everything else that 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 is there, and so. The, the, your database uh, performance is not affected unless you're uh, using this particular feature. And um, that's all I had. And there is no um, driver uh, deployer feed, uh, I mean, impact. We will be adding uh, new policies uh, for all of this. And uh, I think the default policy is admin or uh, owner which means that it's, it's basically, it, I think the default policy is member role can be admin or owner, which means that anyone uh, that owns the share has access to the share, for instance, can modify that, uh, the metadata of that particular uh, share or any other resource. 
and so it it will be uh, x number of policies x being all of these resources that have been identified so um, apart from that yeah so this is some something that uh, we we were trying to determine uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, so the, you you heard tom on tuesday discuss the vertio fs um, uh, effort and part of the thing over there is uh, in for vertio fs when when Manila shares are mounted onto the uh, Nova hypervisors. Um, they expect a tag to be created, a tag that is user facing. And uh, yesterday in the Nova discussions, we, we uh, I mean, the Nova team preferred that that tag be uh, input via Nova. So just in time, if you if if you will. So technically, when you're saying, "Hey, uh, I would I would like to attach this shared file system to this server," I would specify the tag that I would like to use. If I don't specify it, I'd like Nova to make one up uh, for me and let me know what the tag is. And the tag is just a string, uh, and it it uniquely identifies the uh, the share as far as the user is concerned, and what would the default implementation be? Maybe it would be the share ID that, that's there in Manila. Uh, it, it, it would be that simple so that a user that's looking at Manila resources and uh, interacting with Nova will be able to tell, okay, this is gonna be the default tag or I can override it if I want with my own identifier. Let's say I want this share to be used for uh, website data. So I'll just call it website. And that would be be the tag that they'd enter with Nova, and we and Nova would uh, uh, would set this metadata on the Manila share, uh, saying this the tag that we will use for what IOFS is going to be a website, right? So that's the uh, that that's the use case for share metadata over there. But uh, we were trying to see if if we allow users to unset metadata items that they set through the other through another service is that always desirable one argument for that is yes uh, because users have complete control over their resources but this could break something so for example they've gone ahead and mounted the share uh, via word iofs and no one knows for that mo moment and has in its connection data the tag that was used and if the user modifies this tag on manila it has no impact on nova because it's just a uh, it's just a metadata key value pair at that point and the next time nova needs that connection information it doesn't have this and it probably has to reinvent another one so this is the direction of thought there what if you want certain metadata that is that shouldn't be allowed to be modifiable. So it's kind of like putting a final uh, keyword against it or a con making it a constant for the lifetime of that resource. So, uh, or the other part of it was maybe we shouldn't allow that level of flexibility because we, we would then have to invent a new paradigm to actually impose this restriction. We'd have to say, okay, for this metadata key, I'd like to apply a policy where only I, as the user that created the share, or I, as the administrator, can modify the meta this metadata key or this set of metadata keys. So these are locked from modification. Everything else is fair game. That's one aspect of looking at it. So we'd have to invent something like that. Or we can just consider anything that is created by Manila, which is, let's say, Share instance export locations today are created by shared drivers. So this is not created by end users. So anything that's not created by end users, including the, this new word IOFS tag that actually is getting created by Nova and not the end user directly, we'd not allow end users to modify it. We'd allow drivers to modify it if it was shared instance uh, uh, metadata or uh, export location metadata, or we'd allow Nova to modify it, so those metadata items that, that Nova set, but we wouldn't allow end, end users to uh, change them. So that's a little simpler. There is no policy involved. It just means that the service, uh, I mean, service, service metadata is separated. 
and it has it has a uh, it has a new column perhaps against the service metadata that says this is non modifiable metadata so that's another way uh, to probably look at it and the, there are challenges with both um, the 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 idea that you're going to have uh, service modifiable metadata how do you represent it uh, would you be uh, because you can act, when you get the metadata blob you're only going to get keys key value pairs so we would have to uh, provide another api which which would probably tell you which metadata items are uh, service modifiable which ones are user modifiable if you went down that path because if 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 you took the alternative of having a policy around each of these metadata items you would you can you can actually hide it uh, and and allow that you uh, allow user interactions to actually you know fail and they will get a get a policy failure that says 403 you can't modify this particular uh, metadata item you you've not been uh, given permission to do so so that's th this are some of the early thoughts on this but it has nothing to do with the rest of the feature it is it is a complement to the rest of the feature if anything um, because there isn't right now the the only use case for non modifiable metadata is share instance export location metadata and when talking to tom and thinking about what iofs maybe that but that's not the, the these are the only two things that 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 are driving uh, this sort of a requirement it's not a it's not a generic thing So any thoughts on this or on this whole uh, spec itself? We'll, I'll be cleaning this up, submitting this up as a spec. Um, and the implementation should kind of sort of be straightforward, uh, will involve a lot of database surgeries. I mean, not surgeries and migrations uh, to create new, uh, new resources for each of these. but. It's for the better. I think it will be establishing the, the pattern for consistency. Should we introduce another user-facing resource, we would, you know, think first uh, and introduce the metadata alongside this the, the resource itself. And I think on the Etherpad, I have uh, a link to a issue that that spawned all of this um, is, I think, this is in the Manila CSI driver where the driver actually uses a, dis a description field uh, to set, uh, you know, data that it wants to, uh, to, to use to identify that particular resource like this, which is actually a key value pair, but then because the, the snapshot, uh, snapshots don't have metadata, this is the only alternative. Thoughts, statements of support, concern, issues. I think that there's a, a great improvement for, for users. Um, you have that option for all those resources. And, but uh, I, I also don't have a preference between the, the two options of implementing that that you will work explaining but uh, we can uh, think a little bit and further discuss on a, on a spec that you're going to propose but uh, uh, um, I think that's okay I think that's a very very important feature to have nice to have on Manila as you already pointed on the snapshot uh, is missing some metadata and uh, CSI uses in the description for that. that kind of uh, makes ugly, but uh, for sure this will be better for us. Agreed. And in the spec, I think I will I will try to propose this this new thing, uh, which is it's a stretch goal. Uh, it's not 
it's not directly related to adding metadata to, to all of our resources, right? The, the, the thing though that I would want to do is maybe first start off with uh, alternative two, which is uh, identify metadata that cannot be modified by users and just keep that opaque. Um, uh, we, if the users try to modify them, then we, we, we set an error message, we, we declare it in documentation that certain service metadata cannot be modified. Uh, and, and then we okay. can evolve that into adding the policy and saying, okay, maybe administrators can modify this, uh, even, even this service metadata. So it's a little more granular uh, and make uh, helps us make progress on the export location metadata for one. Because I, 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 we had this issue with export locations uh, very recently in the Manila CSI space and very soon we will have them in the word IOFS space. Uh, it, it, it is this that when Manila presents multiple export locations and let's say all of them are non-preferred uh, or you have a bunch of preferred ones, which ones do you choose? Yeah, it's a problem. Exactly, and we, we expect a human to make that de determination. Uh, somehow, because maybe we could do a ping test or a, or a mount test and see whether it times out or something like that. But it kind of makes the automation a little more clunkier than uh, if a human just decided this is what I would like to use in this particular uh, scenario. Yeah. That's all. all right. Any further thoughts, questions? So the AI here is to uh, present a spec and we can take the discussion to the spec. Sure. Yep. I also support this. It will be a great improvement. We'll be glad to get it back when it's proposed. Awesome, thank you. All right, all right. Uh, so I think we're running ten minutes late, um, as uh, is probably normal. So let's take a ten-minute break, perhaps, and make that twenty minutes late, uh, or something. So uh, we, maybe we should uh, reconvene at uh, fifteen ten. It's a nine-minute break. Sorry, and I will start the timer. Okay. We're recording. Okay, no, but I did want to uh, ask if folks could uh, would, would want to look into the camera so I could take a screenshot for the foundation. Um, all right. I'll give you another second to put switch on your cameras, if you will. Hey there, Robert. Hello. All right. Okay. So let me just. Oh, Mark's on a beach in Hawaii, perhaps. <laughs> that is crazy. Come on, Mark. You get to have a vacation when Ashley's studying and all that. Yeah, basically. So... I need it, man. <laughs> all right. Right. Yeah, right. for the benefit. <laughs> um. Great. Um, so thanks. I took a I took a screenshot. You all look great. <laughs> uh, thanks for switching on your cameras for me. Uh, but we, as we step into the next discussion, uh, I will probably uh, hand over the baton to Victoria and uh, and Mori drive this. But I did want to uh, start off by introducing our special honor here today um, and i am very excited for <clears throat> uh, for this portion uh, so uh, let me start uh, by introducing that we are um, that, that we are working with boston university uh, and we uh, specifically with uh, mark tony ashley uh, and nicole um, uh, on their senior design project and uh, it's with great pleasure that I announced that their senior design project is going to be with, uh, on OpenStack Monola 
which is uh, huge for us. Um, and they will be working on the OpenStack SDK. Uh, and they will, I mean, right, right now, Manila has no presence in the OpenStack SDK. Uh, we did try to attempt to get something there and uh, we will actually going to, uh, going to be restarting those efforts with what uh, these three uh, are going to be doing. So if you'd want to say hi, uh, Mark, and introduce yourselves, say something um, uh, okay. about what you do, uh, what your interests are, et cetera. And this is the team. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Mark Tony. I'm a computer engineering major with a minor in computer science and another minor in innovation and um, entrepreneurship uh, here at Boston University. Uh, I'm actually not in Hawaii. I'm actually in uh, Boston, where I don't know if you can see, but it's actually snowing outside. Um, I don't, yeah, sorry, the, the beach filter blocks it, but it is snowing outside. Um, I wish I was warm, but um, I don't know. As of my plans for the future, uh, right now it's a toss up. I'd say there's a like 60% chance I go on to grad school and a 40% chance that I just start working right away. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, but interests, uh, I, as you can see, I'm a big New York Mets baseball fan. Um, I like watching baseball during my free time. And when the season's not in, uh, I'm honestly usually studying because baseball is like my summer, like early semester sport. And then when baseball is not going on, that's usually when school's harder. So I'm usually just focusing on school. Um, so yeah, uh, I do live in Boston right now. I'm here just for school, but I will um, go, uh, I live in New Jersey. So I'll probably stay in New Jersey after uh, Thanksgiving and I'll stay here. Um, the rest of the semester but yeah that was it yeah hi i'm ashley rodriguez also a senior at bu also a computer engineering uh major i am in boston it's cold and wet and horrible outside um i am from miami originally i'm here studying in boston and uh i'd love to stay in boston once i graduate but you know, I might have to go back home anyways. I am going back home for Thanksgiving. Have some family coming over from Columbia. That's exciting. Um, but yeah, things are going well so far. So hi, I'm Nicole. Uh, I'm a computer and electrical engineer at also Boston University. I also came from New Jersey, where I'm from New Jersey. I'm here in Boston right now just for school. I actually feel like I'm the only one who really likes the weather right now. Like, I, I love it when the snow is like fluffy and not slush. So it's like my optimal weather. And uh, I think you asked like what we wanted to do in the future. For me, um, I'm currently trying to find full time. I actually heard back yesterday, which is pretty exciting. And yeah, I think that's probably where I'm going to end up after school. Great. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us and for introducing us uh, yourselves. You're going to be seeing uh, the, I mean, all of these folks uh, on IRC, on code reviews, etc. And they will be helping you, um, you, you know, uh, through your senior design uh, project. And for the rest of the Manila team, um, we're going to be working with uh, Mark Ashley and Nicole through uh, May of next year, if I get the uh, academic calendar right. Um, uh, or, or at least through two of their semesters. So it's, uh, we're going to have ample opportunity to get to know each other. And hopefully, if the next uh, uh, summit or PTG is uh, in any physical location, we might, we might actually see them in person as well. Um, so that's the uh, spiel on that. Uh, there, the, uh, we don't have much to uh, discuss in terms of what we're doing with the OpenStack SDK. Uh, but we will uh, soon probably put up a spec uh, that that I want us to work on, and we will uh, in start interacting with the OpenStack SDK team, uh, which is currently trying to figure out a meeting time uh, for the community to meet on IRC. So I know I know. Um, uh, oh, by the way, uh, before I forget, uh, the mentors. Uh, so we uh, I'm, not, I'm not alone in uh, in in. Think, uh, uh, these students, they, 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 I'm joined by an awesome quarterly of mentors. Uh, so uh, as as you would obviously expect Victoria on the team, uh, because she's she's definitely the uh, guiding uh, one over there. Uh, and, and then we also have Maury Tan um, uh, 
on the mentoring team, uh, except it's probably too late in her day every time we try to have calls because uh, we are all on uh, in the in this US or in this in, in similar time zones. And we have uh, uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Frodberg that works with um, uh, Sahara. He's the PTL for uh, OpenStack Sahara, and he also works at Red Hat as a software engineer. And we have Kendall Nelson. Uh, Kendall, as the rest of the Manila team knows, um, works with the foundation, um, the OpenStack Foundation, as well as uh, she does a lot of outreach and first contact uh, sort of work, and also is now planning to drive the OpenStack SDK, OpenStack CLI stuff. So you've, you've in, in a uh, way, actually motivated her uh, to get started on that stuff across all of OpenStack. So uh, we, have, we have lots to look forward to in terms of that. All right, anything else that you'd like to add? Vicky, Maury? Awesome. Not much for me, just that we are very excited to have you folks, um, Nicole, Mark, and Ashley. Definitely, we need your energy and your you know, nice ideas. And as I mentioned to Gotham the other day, your coffee as well, because you have a great energy and that helps us a lot. So um, happy to see you on this call as well. Great. Uh, we'll, you'll definitely hear from uh, the rest of the folks during the happy hour uh, and, and hear them speak and make jokes and such. So let's hold off for that. And let's hand over to uh, Mori for the OpenStack client update. All right. Um, I actually created the Etherpad. OK, so there's not uh, uh, much to say, but uh, last cycle we added quotas, share resize, uh, some snapshots commands. And I think we finally got the initial documentation batch in. So now with every new batch, we can add the documentation as we go. Uh, thanks to everyone who reviewed my patches. And um, so we started implementing uh, weight options. There's a blueprint for that. And uh, well, the point is to add uh, an option to wait for an action to complete or a resource to uh, reach a certain state, like available, for example. And uh, we'll go back and add waiters uh, to the commands that we already have that uh, should have those uh, options. And for new patches, uh, we'll just add the waiters as we go. Uh, so that that case, finishing the blueprint like is actually doable. <laughs> And uh, so still there's a lot of uh, work to do and we have a board to track the tasks. Uh, I don't know Gotham, if you want to show the board or, or not. I added uh, all the commands that still we need to be implemented as uh, tasks. And uh, I kind of group the tasks as uh, uh, well, like groups of commands. If you can open like any of the tickets, you'll see I wrote also the, uh, not this is for testing, I think. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, for example. So I, um, the task has also the, the commands that should be implemented. And uh, some tasks are bigger than others and uh, some can be also uh, moved, uh, divide it to separate patches if there's like too many commands at once. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of tasks in there. <laughs> and um, if anyone is interested uh, joining me, implementing those, just feel free to join the board or ask Gotham to add you and take a task and get working. <laughs> It's actually pretty straightforward uh, at this point, a lot of copy pasting and uh, testing and uh, uh, yeah, so that's a part of it. And um, uh, it's also very, very nice. These are also really cool tasks if someone wants to get started. So 
maybe if you have someone who wants to contribute and they don't know what to do exactly, where to start, then you can offer these tasks. It's like uh, quite uh, quite easy to implement. And I also wrote like this very, very basic uh, implementation guide, just a few steps uh, to, to get started. Uh, so it's uh, it's not looking great, but it has like, uh, my main thoughts and what to keep in mind in there so I think anyone who is like a little bit familiar with OpenStack if they look at this they can just start writing tasks easy easy peasy and we can review <laughs> um, yeah so um, what was else on the etherpad okay so goals uh, well I have the second half of snapshots almost ready uh, still missing unit tests and also waiters <laughs> now that I think of it. Uh, but it will be ready for review soon. And um, I would like to finish the waiters so to get that, that task done and uh, just move forward with uh, adding those one by one. And um, uh, so, yeah, I'd like to start kind of. Uh, start the effort on switching uh, to use the SDK. Uh, I attended the SDK uh, talk on this PTG on Wednesday. And one thing that they, they mentioned is that uh, uh, while they were implementing, uh, trying to switch some Nova commands to use the SDK, then during, during that process, they disco discovered some things that need to be changed in the SDK maybe. Uh, so, I was thinking that it would be nice if now we are starting to implement the SDK, we could kind of uh, at least uh, start switching the OSC commands as well, or write new commands that use SDK. So just so we we can kind of like uh, move move together, since we need actually both, uh, and then see what's the priority and uh, and so on. And uh, well. We are always asking for uh, requests, right? Uh, what commands to implement next? So I don't know if we have any any users here today who have uh, some requests. Maybe not. Uh, well, anyways, if. Uh, uh, if maybe later someone has request or something, uh, uh, you can also just email me straight <laughs> and I'll just move that task, take that task next. Uh, so it's easy as that. And yeah, I don't know if, uh, I think that's, that's it for me. Uh, any questions, concerns, ideas? Thanks, Mori. It's a great summary and a great work you have been doing. I only have a comment because um, by like to try to understand which commands should be implemented next, like the goal would be to finish the coverage, but of course that we have priorities. And for those, we probably need to ping um, certain folks again and uh, uh, people from uh, Bexhost. Last week, the on the Open Infra Summit, they led a session on the forum, uh, both uh, Mohamed Nasser from Bexhost and uh, I think it was Belmiro Moreira from CERN. Um, so probably they have good feedback to share with us on, on this aspect. Like the, the main discussion on the forum was not focused on Manila, but yes, they were focused on uh, actually closing the gap between um, OpenStack client and the exciting, existing, sorry, um, Python clients. So uh, probably we can reach out them later uh, with this summary and get some feedback from them. But yeah, that's a great summary. Yeah, thanks. Great. Uh, thank you for keeping the momentum on this, Mori, and thank you for. Uh, creating that piecemeal of, uh, of of the plan, this allows for anybody to step in and actually take individual items and consult with you for guidance and stuff. So, uh, what, one thing I did want to ask though is, 
as we are trying to ramp up uh, Nicole, Mark, and uh, Ashley, just try to you know uh, see if you can uh, hand over one of these tasks to them and see if we can help uh, guide them through that uh, for their interest, of course. And uh, and these are sufficiently small that will help them get uh, get an idea of how to work with the code review system or uh, in, in in these these different services that we have, uh, that they'll have to implement. Sorry, interact with when they're implementing the SDK pieces. And as you said, uh, you'll be interacting with them all through when they're doing the SDK because we want to do it in tandem with the CLI. Yeah, yeah definitely. And uh, there are like a few tasks in there that are really, really nice and small. I think one is just adding a few attributes. So not even implementing a new command. Uh, one is like implementing one command. But of course, we can always split like uh, into like tiny patches. So that's always an option. So yeah, definitely, I can I can find some good tasks if they're interested. Awesome. Great. Uh, any other feedback concerns that you want to share with Mori? Actually, I do have an idea, sort of. So we had our meeting with our professor yesterday regarding. Uh, our progress with this uh, project and he recommended us to have a sprint over the next two weeks. So if Madi is okay with it, we can use those implementations as our sprint for the next two weeks so we can uh, have something to show for the class first on what it is that we're working on. Is that amenable? <laughs> um sure from my point of view but maybe maybe that should be more related to sdk thought on what you think uh, i don't know i uh, definitely wanted them to have an easier on ramp uh, than the whole uh, yeah than the sdk effort because wanted to first start with the spec as to what what apis are getting covered in the sdk and uh, i was trying to plan this pair programming stuff with uh, victoria you as well as the other mentors so uh, maybe we can, we can use this as a piece, but it's not going to form your SDK work. Yes, uh, it's 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 this is a this is a different project, uh, a related project, but it's not the same. But but this is definitely a good first issue sort of thing. Does that still work, Ashley? Yeah, I am up for whatever you guys think is best for us to be introduced to you know the code behind Manila. Great. Yeah, I think uh, definitely. I think this is a, a, a kind of a fun thing to also uh, uh, like show. You can just like try, uh, type commands and see uh, what's happening, creating a share, and so on, so on, so on. Yeah, I think that could be like a cool thing. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks for that concern, uh, Ashley. And anybody else? Anything else? So the action items uh, concern what Victoria has uh, brought up regarding the priorities. So uh, I, I don't know how you want to approach this. Victoria, Mori, do you have any ideas uh, how to reach out to these folks? Do you have a forum? Mailing list. Okay. Yeah. We should yeah we should directly address them there. Like start to thread on the OpenStack discuss and. Uh, which uh, some guys and Bex hosts and maybe other interested uh, parties will join us on the discussion as well. I will let that to Mori. I don't know if you actually ever sent a, an email to the OpenStack Discuss mailing list. It can be intimidating, but. <laughs> No, I, haven't. I, I think I still haven't figured out the filters either. Either like I get emails every like five minutes or I don't get anything. So <laughs> I'll, re <laughs> I'll try to set it up finally. It's been a year. I have to get it sorted. <laughs> it's, this is a good opportunity to do so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when you do that, though, I have a suggestion. Uh, always lead with your own priority. <laughs> Uh, because uh, otherwise you might have folks that either append the whole thing uh, with, with this stuff or try to, uh, you know, or, or not respond because they think you know, they probably have uh, no input 
if they can't look at something that they can they can improve sorts. So if you have a list of prioritized, uh, I mean, I think you do, right? I think we discussed this uh, sort of in the last PTG as well. Uh, your your plan of how to attack this, which is the next set of commands that are coming. That way you you you'll allow folks to just let you know if uh, hey I'd like this one first versus this sort of thing. I don't know that I have a list. I think the only the only idea that we got last PTG was resize and snapshots, and that we have now kind of almost. Uh, so me personally, I I don't have any preference. Obviously, uh, I know that we have like uh, when I was uh, writing up the task, I I found that there are like this like um, like some things like adding a um, a new attribute or something. So. I would like to clean those out because it's just bothers me that we are like some things are kind of like have here and there and then we will uh, be left with just groups of commands uh, but these are tiny things and i think we can do uh, those uh, those now uh, shortly so yeah yeah i don't know i don't have any preference if Difference anyone order. has any preference list, share share with me and uh, i can present that there as so. well. Sure thing, yeah. Let's do that then. Let's maybe make an etherpad uh, uh, for the team priority first, and we will shave that yak a little bit before we allow others to get, a, get an opportunity. I'll, uh, I'll share that with you uh, in a bit more after this. Anything else? Any other thoughts on this? All right, thanks, Mori. Uh, and let's move on to the next topic, which is Manula UI update. And we're talking to Victoria about that. Cool. I follow the great example that Mori gave us on also creating an enterprise. I could say I did it yesterday, but I just did it. So, <laughs> being completely honest here, uh, let me put that there, right there. Um, all right, so I'm just going to cover uh, two main things. Uh, one is what happened on Victoria, and the other thing is what happened on what is going to happen, or at least what is planned to happen on Wallaby. Uh, so for Victoria, um, I was trying to focus on uh, closing the gap uh, between the micro version that we support the Manila UI and what we currently have in Manila. We are missing a lot of cool features that we have in Manila because of this. So that was my priority. But one of the main things I kind of found was that in order to um, actually move to a higher version, we had to implement a whole new feature, which is user messages. Uh, so that's what I did actually. And uh, also kind of joined forces with Cinder. Uh, they were working on their own implementation of the user messages for Cinder. So I try to work with Horizon folks working on that and try to do something like that for Manila. So we did that. Um, I don't know, go time if, if I can share my screen so I can show it um, because maybe some of you are familiar with the user messages and some of you are not. Yeah. Um, I think Douglas will need to make you. I think that um, she already position, we, we just need to stop on, okay. on your side. If it's not too hard, though. No. Because I'm aware that most of us just don't actually check the UI. Um, you can try to, to share your screen with me. All right, super. So, so you're probably seeing uh, the iPad uh, now. Or can you see the dashboard now? Yes. All right. So um, basically, the the way we implemented the user message panel is uh, very straightforward. If you go to the share tab, you're going to see user messages tab over there. Right now, that's empty. But if we go ahead and try to create a share, um, my environment is broken on purpose. So I'm going to say, okay, my share. Um, let's see if this live demo works. Manila zone zero, and that's it, create. And we have an error here. 
let's go to user messages and check what happened. Okay, so we have these user messages in which apparently uh, we couldn't, uh, well, the capability filter didn't succeed. So uh, this happened because we have a bug in depth success plugin and we are setting our um, shared type to have a snapshot support equal to false. And right now that is not the case anymore. It's true. So if we update this um, and we try to create a share again, uh, let's go here. And no, I have to go to project here. There you go, my share. This should work. If it fails, I'm going to be super sorry, but you have to bear with me here. Right. Boom, available. So with that, I want to share basically um, how easy it is to actually uh, figure out what happened on the backend without actually going to check the logs. Uh, this is the main, uh, this was the main use case for the user messages API that actually you, you, you can consume that with something um, user friendly such as the, well, the dashboard, right? And uh, you can see the errors easily there and you don't have to go to the um, uh, logs. Uh, in this case, it would be the uh, share logs and try to figure out what happened. Uh, we have a few user messages now, and this is a very basic implementation with it. Uh, in the case of Cinder, they implemented the user messages on a tab as part of each of the resources. We can do the same, and I actually aim to do this uh, for the Victoria cycle. Uh, that would be what would Cinder do. Um, right over here. <laughs> uh, so we have the same, like, honestly, on, on my point of view of usability, uh, trying to get all the user messages in a single place was uh, better for user than actually having them spread out on different resources. But we are going to try to uh, comply with what Cinder is doing and also add this option as well. Um, and also polish a lot of issues that started appearing after, well, when we started working on this feature, um, started seeing that we have a few uh, bugs on different areas on the UI and different things that we need to fix. So that's what we did in Victoria. This is part of what we are planning for Wallaby. Um, continuing on this work, also um, fixing some usability issues that uh, I mentioned we, we found. For instance, one example is the East public attribute display that was fixed by Dina this week. Um, it's very simple. I don't know if I have this in my environment yet. Let me check. Um, yeah, now you have a tick to actually say if the share you have is public or not. Uh, by default, it's created by, on false, uh, but you can actually change it right here and it's going to change and it's, you know, your status is kept. In the old version of the UI, you will have to pick between none, yes, or false, or sorry, none, true or false. And it was kind of counterintuitive. Um, so we fixed that. I know it's a really minor thing, but you know, uh, the devil is on the details and these kind of things are all over the UI. Uh, so we will be working on fixing those. Um, we will also be working on fixing some of the uh, texting coverage that we have, uh, some uh, of the, um, well, uh, other um, big features that we have, for instance, the internship task that Dina is will be taking is about adding share resize. Um, of course, um, we still have to plan uh, with people that is expert in usability, that is not my case <laughs> for sure, but to actually talk with people that know about these, these well, interfaces and how uh, people consume interfaces to come with a good design. So we are going to start with that and hopefully we can add it to the UI and keep working on other missing uh, features we have on the UI. Um, and yes, continue working on closing the gap between the micro version um, on Manila and Manila UI. Um, this is actually the current plan, of course, that there is a lot of room for more improvements to come, uh, but initially uh, that's what I have on mind. Um, so that's it.
I'm going to stop sharing. Any comments, questions, concerns? No, this is great work. Thank you, Victoria. Um, and we, uh, it's uh, for the rest for the rest of you. Uh, it's it's great momentum that we're keeping right now on the Manila UI. It's a problem that we've we've started addressing uh, after the past few PTGs, and all thanks to the hard work that Vicky has been putting it uh, putting in, and the community that she's she's building alongside as well. So looking forward to that outreach internship as well. Cool, thanks, Gautam. Any other concerns com uh, or feedback? Nope, all right. Uh, so let's quickly move on to the last topic that we have for today. Um, and uh, sorry about that, Robert. Uh, I think we have, uh, we've, actually reduce the amount of time that we have but we will try to go on and uh, if anything uh, you know cover all of your um, you know all the things that you want to talk about and before we take a break and I'll get into the happy hour so uh, Robert uh, can I hand over the uh, thing to you and if you want to share your document with us or uh, anything you're free to do so sure uh, okay so I'm not sure I can share my desktop because I'm running from a web browser. Uh, maybe you can show it. I, yeah, sure. I can try, but... Um, yeah. Give me a link, I'll share it. It's on Slack. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Okay, so um, so this is a document that uh, basically discusses uh, our uh, what are our goals for the uh, version one of of manual CSI and uh, it talks about the most prominent feature of this new ver version that's going to be uh, adding support for multiple protocols in a single instance of the driver. So maybe you know, maybe you don't. Uh, Manual CSI currently supports only a single share protocol to be served by the by a single driver instance. Uh, we offer currently NFS shares and CFS shares. So this means that you would have a separate instance of the driver for NFS and another separate instance for CFS. Uh, this brings up a few problems that we would like to fix. Uh, some of those are it's difficult to maintain because you know you have uh, more moving parts in the cluster that uh, may possibly break. Uh, all of those instances are talking to the same manual service anyway, so it doesn't really make sense from the user perspective to have all of these instances running. And lastly, there is issue with monitoring. Uh, we don't have, we don't support monitoring at the moment, but once we add this feature, we would have to do some sort of aggregation from all of the instances of the driver and then expose those metrics to the cluster. So uh, a way to unify all of those instances uh, by adding support for uh, you know, being able to serve multiple share protocols from a single instance of the driver would uh, take care of those issues. Uh, so uh, first half of the document talks about uh, 
CSI capabilities. Um, I'm not sure those are of too much of a concern for this TPG, but what I would like to bring up uh, is uh, the resulting impact of this change on users and how they are going to uh, be deploying the uh, driver once this support lands. So we are currently considering uh, two main scenarios that we might encounter. Actually, there are three. I'll talk about it later. So the first one is, uh, you know, there is a new user who is deploying the driver. Uh, we would recommend the user to deploy it in a multi-protocol mode and uh, there shouldn't be any problem, right? It's a new deployment. The, there is no reason to handle any sort of backwards compatibility. The problem arises when uh, there is an already existing deployment of the driver in cluster. Uh, and what the problem basically boils down, down to is how all of the existing instances are registered within the cluster, uh, mainly the driver name. And, you know, this, this driver name thing is a seemingly innocent thing, but uh, it, it creates all sorts of, sorts of problems. So I'll try to describe those now. So uh, when you create, uh, let's say, a persistent volume, from uh, you know, you know uh, using the, the CSI driver, Kubernetes will tag this uh, persistent volume object with that driver name. Uh, this this name will be then used to uh, for for uh, for Kubernetes to decide who is then responsible for the lifetime of the volume. You know for uh, deleting the volume, uh, which CSI driver is going to mount it when, once it's supposed to be, you know, exposed to um, workloads in the cluster. Uh, so the driver name is a, you know, a unique handle to the uh, CSI driver that's uh, deployed within the cluster. So. Uh, what I'm trying to say basically here is that uh, once you have a CSI driver deployed in the cluster, you, you can't change the, the name because the name is you know, all over the place. It's uh, used in the uh, you know, bookkeeping of, of uh, the storage resources. So uh, there are two ways to attack this problem. First one is uh, rather risky. Uh, it's uh, that's page six, I think. Uh, yeah. Or one one page up. Uh, Or page down, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the section is called impact for existing deployments. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, it's it's your yes. Okay. So uh, there are two cases. Again, it's. Uh, it revol revolves around what is the how is the existing deployment of the driver called within the cluster. Uh, the open stack operator for CSI Manila did the right thing to name the driver Manila CSI OpenStack.org uh, because we really don't don't need to take care of that much of uh, things uh, as it is in case of 
when the de deployment is made using uh, the Helm chart we are providing. Because in that case, it's uh, as you can see, uh, the name is prepended with the share protocol uh, for which the, that in instance of the driver is uh, dedicated. So we have a risky way to take this and uh, the safe way. And that's the way uh, also the CSI folks are recommending uh, we should take. Uh, I'll start, start with the risky way because uh, you know, that's uh, maybe more fun, uh, but really not, not recommended. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, the user would deploy the new instance of the driver with the uh, multi-protocol stuff enabled. Uh, then they would uh, modify or replace existi existing storage resources created by the old driver instances. Uh, then, you know, recreate the storage classes so they point to the new version of the driver. And then uh, delete the uh, objects that refer to the uh, storage resources from the old version and uh, then they can uh, phase out the old version of the driver. Uh, this is risky because uh, if there is, uh, you know, some sort of screw up uh, in terms of uh, an admin would forget to uh, mark the deletion policy on some per persistent volume to retain or things like that, the, there is a possibility of data loss. So what the CSI folks were uh, recommending uh, here is that uh, users would deploy the new version of the driver in the cluster, and this would coexist side, side by side with the existing instances of the driver. And those existing instances would be phased out only after uh, all of their resources are deleted. So this obviously can take a very long time, you know, because some, some shares can uh, exist for, I don't know, years or whatever. So uh, we are fine with that. Uh, because uh, we would provide backwards compatibility for the single protocol um, mode uh, indefinitely because uh, there is uh, you know not a lot of change for us uh, when it comes to how, how many actual share protocols would be uh, then you know in use so uh, yeah that's that um, and there is a third scenario that I was uh, talking with about uh, with the employee from CERN. They are deploying manual CSI in their OpenShift clusters. They are not using uh, the operator because they are they want to use uh, CFFS shares. And he was asking me. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned that we are going to make this change. Uh, and he asked me if uh, there is any way to prepare, prepare for the change so they don't have to make, you know, this, uh, you know, that they would have to keep the old versions of the driver along with the uh, new version where is, uh, where the, uh, multi-protocol stuff is uh, already implemented. So uh, what I recommended him is uh, obviously take the safe way first. Uh, but maybe there is a way to circumvent this problem by renaming the driver beforehand, even though they are using the old version but rename it from 
uh, you know, so that it's, it's not saying uh, the share protocol dot manila dot CSI OpenStack.org, but so so that it already says manila CSI OpenStack without the share protocol in the driver name. Uh, so that's one possibility. Uh, I haven't really explored this option very much because uh, you know it, it, I think it, it needs further investigation uh, to just you know tell him to do this. Uh, we can discuss this uh, maybe later offline. And yeah, so I, I did have uh, I mean similar thoughts on that. Basically, uh, the the reason OpenShift doesn't have uh, doesn't use the uh, protocol stuff and Mike can correct me uh, was just this that we wanted to do the Ceph via NFS and not Ceph mm -hmm. yet. So uh, if, and CERN seems very similar to me. They don't use NFS or any other protocol. They yeah. use only Ceph FS. So it looks straight, straightforward for them to just not um, have the shared protocol uh, part of the driver name at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, you're you're right. Uh, yeah, we, we we can discuss this offline later, but I think we can uh, handle this change with the iterator. Uh, I mean, upgrade from 4.6 to 4.7 uh, if necessary. Yeah, it's not a big deal for us. I hope. So those version numbers may not mean stuff to everybody, but 4.6 just came out and it will, uh, um, so he's saying, Mike is saying, sounds good and would do it pretty soon mm -hmm. yep. on the next release, potentially. Yep. So Robert, are you aware of any other changes in the CSI community regarding this? Like, this is not a problem with just us, right? I can te technically you could be, I mean, as the CSI drivers evolve, they might decide to, uh, you know, change the driver name. Is this the only way to, to, to actually reconcile that? Uh, as far as I know, and as, as far as I've been told, yes. Uh, I've seen cases where, uh, for example, the NFS CSI driver changed its name and they didn't really have any sort of upgrade plan or migration plan in place. Uh, so yeah, they, they just went with it. Uh, so, what I'm trying to say that there is not uh, very much, you know, real world experience as far as I know with uh, switching driver name. Awesome. Um, any other impact that we should be aware of uh, with this? This is an extensive document. I, I, I would like for folks to review this. Uh, certainly and uh, for instance Mike that's working on the operator side you will find a lot of uh, notes that Robert's already added on the upgrades uh, upgrade impact of each of the changes that he's thinking about so the li links on the etherpad but Robert is there anything else that you wanted to bring out to the demo crowd uh, I think that's it no. I just want to comment that, uh, Robert, thank you so much for um, um, for this uh, level of, um, for the depth of, of thought on this and taking into consideration um, the operational impact of this stuff. Um, it's it's re really a great example. Um, and yeah, Mike, uh, please, 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 we, we're counting on you to look it over because you you, uh, I'm, I'm sure Robert has contacts at CERN um, that he can have look at it from that angle. Uh, but you're the other big known um, deployer of this right now. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm going to take a look how you you plan to do this work. Um, yeah, also we can ask Jan Shafranik to look at this as well. Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I was talking with him regarding this driver yeah. name change and yeah, this is what we've basically discussed. Yeah. And that's the result of that communication. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Uh, thanks, Robert. Any other concerns for Robert that you'd like to share? I'm not sure if he touched on the, uh, the roadmap stuff, um, but he he did give us an, a view of what's coming uh, in the uh, in the forum discussion as far as monolith CSI goes. Besides the uh, combining the protocol drivers, he's also looking at uh, adding a share extension. And um, and and there's other things in the roadmap that we, we can we can look at from the forum discussion. Any questions on that? If not, then um, additional share annotations. Um, Mike, you had a yeah, topic. Yeah. Hi, again. Uh, <clears throat> actually, maybe not annotations, but yeah, first. Uh, I think I, I need to describe the essence of the problem we uh, want to solve. Maybe you have ideas uh, how to do it better. Yeah, but you know, when, uh, we use Manila CSI driver and OpenShift starting from 4.5, which is our previous release, and uh, it works well. When you create a PV, it automatically creates a share in Manila. And on the opposite, when you delete the PV, its share is automatically deleted. It works well, uh, but uh, when you delete a cluster, you may have some shares left there. Uh, and it means that uh, we should have a way to delete remaining shares after. And this is especially visible uh, when there are several clusters in one tenant. Uh, you have uh, a lot of stalled shares there. And I looked there, uh, there is a description, like provisioned by Manila CSI something, but there is no way to distinguish between them, which shares are used, which shares are not used, and we can delete them manually. Uh, and, uh, I think we need to find a way to um, maybe annotate share somehow with cluster ID. Uh, I looked at uh, Manila API and there I found uh, metadata. So you can add a key value like, I don't know, cluster ID and then real ID. And this real ID can be defined by uh, a storage class. Like adding an option there with cluster ID. And if this option is specified in the storage class, uh, Manila provisioner will add this notation uh, to metadata. What do you think? It's great thought and I think great timing. Uh, because <laughs> I think Robert just had a patch yesterday. Uh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll try to find the patch for you, but Robert can describe the solution. Uh, so, so uh, the patch allows users to supply a map of well, key value uh, pairs. Uh, which will be then supplied to the uh, share when when you know, it's being created. Yeah, go to and found it. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, user defined metadata is then supplied to uh, the share that is being cre created. This is actually what we need. Great, and uh, I plan to start this work 
by myself, but since you finished it, yeah, <laughs> you <just need> to, <laughs> to fetch your patch and yeah, start using it. Awesome. So, yes, I was laughing because of the perfect timing of this, but I want to ask yeah, about the use case just a little bit. Um, I understand the idea that when a cluster is deleted, um, one may want to clean up all storage resources that were used by the cluster. However, I think that may be, there may be also use cases where one wants a persistent volume to persist and be there the next time you stand up a cluster for use of it. And we may, may want to be able to um, allow that as an option. Uh, I'll give you an example, but if I, if I have to pay a cloud provider to um, run a Kubernetes cluster or an OpenShift cluster, um, and it is a provider of elastic resources, then it might make sense for me to run that cluster um, for a while, uh, you know, on, uh, around uh, holiday sales, around election times, around something, you know, with, a, with elastic demand where I need a lot of compute resources. Um, and then keep results around, and then tear down the cluster and keep results around for the next seasonal time that I want to use it. Um, so in those cases, uh, I would only be paying for the storage until I need the cluster around. Um, as you know, uh, due to fine work by people like Mike uh, in OpenShift, it takes maybe 40 minutes to stand up a cluster. Um, so it's, you know, it's not inconvenient to have to tear it down and be able to come back and pick up uh, volumes from before. There may be other ways to handle it than saving the same PVs. I don't know, you know, you could store them in some offline storage and reload them and so on. But I kind of feel like um, if a user chooses to mark the vol, and maybe this is a metadata solution actually, that they, that they choose to uh, mark it as uh, something they do not want cleaned up when their cluster's cleaned up, um, that would be something to respect and allow. I, I, I think they can, oh, my, Mike, Robert, you can correct me. Isn't that the purpose of the uh, retain uh, policy? And I'm not sure if when you're deleting the OC cluster, uh, it triggers the deletion of the PVs. Yeah, I may have misunderstood the use case in the first place that Mike was describing. I don't know. Uh, I think retain would help definitely in this case. Uh, the problem, well, it's not really a problem, but uh, the next time that the cluster would be created, the cluster ID would not match, but that's probably what we want anyway. We are keeping the the share still, even the in, even if the next cluster is deleted. So, yeah, I think this uh, what Tom was talking about now, uh, reclaim policy set to retain would uh, solve it. Okay, cool. Uh, any other questions, concerns for this topic? If there are none, uh, great. Uh, actually, uh, I think this is the end of the formal se uh, 
you know, proceedings of the uh, Manila PTG for the Wallaby cycle. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, this isn't the end of our day, though. Uh, what, uh, what's coming up is a, is a lot more fun than the technical discussions. We'd like you to, uh, to grab a drink of your choice and join us for a completely non-technical discussion. The, the penalty for talking technical stuff is to keep drinking uh, some more of whatever drink you have in your hand. Uh, so, but but uh, to 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 sum it all, though, I really want to uh, thank all of you for joining uh, all of the, all through this PDG. A special thank you for all the guests that joined us today uh, to discuss various topics and for all the future work that we have. Um, I mean, w this crowd is what makes this uh, team click and the work uh, all the more exciting. So, thanks all, and uh, we'll just take a. Uh, five minute break uh, to grab um, whatever we need. And uh, Douglas, you can stop recording. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on just a second. Can I take one last picture while you're uh, there? If you can turn on your cameras. Sure. Yay, I can see Vida. At least she doesn't have a window showing me the snow, so. <laughs> I wanted to press you. We have like three inches today. Oh, oh yeah, and hey, special first guest, Flocky. First ever, hey, hey, Flocky. First ever white Halloween, Flocky. by the way. Andre and Tiago are too shy. Andre is always shy. <laughs> he types the response. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so we'll take a, we'll take five minutes and uh, meet again right here. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Grab your drinks. Thank you.